Welcome to a mini lecture about reverses. Um, this mini lecture is hopefully going to be quite short. Um, it's about the material you can read in definition 1.23 and uh, it's going to give you some examples as well. So uh, we're going to start over here on the top left. It's quite a busy screen. Sorry about that. Um, but let's begin up here. Let L be an oriented link. So remember, uh, a link can have many different orientations. If we choose one, then what we get is an oriented link. Then the reverse of L, which is denoted by RL, that is the oriented link obtained from L by reversing the orientation. So if I started with the, the oriented link on the bottom left here, this is a link called L11N197, uh, N because it's not alternating, uh, the crosses don't go over under, see? These two crossings are adjacent and they're both over. Um, anyway, this is the link L11N197 and I've given it an orientation of my choice. So what's the reverse? Well, all I do is wherever I see an arrow on the left hand diagram, I put the reverse arrow on the right like so. And of course there might not be arrows all over the diagram, there might just be one if it was a knot or uh, one per component if it's a link. Um, in this case I'm going to reverse all of them. There we go. So that's L11N197 and that's R of L11N197. So an example of a phenomenon that can happen quite frequently. Let K denote the following oriented trefoil. So K is going to be this very specific trefoil with the given orientation. Then the uh, question is, show that K is equivalent to its reverse. And here's how we do it. Well, first of all, let's draw the reverse of K. That's easy for me. All I do is take the original diagram and reverse, whoops, and reverse the orientation there. So there's the reverse of K. How can I get between these two? I can get between these two by the following cheeky maneuver, which is to take the original K and rotate it. And the way I'm going to rotate it is around this vertical axis that goes through the middle of the knot. Through a full 180 degrees. So let's write that on the arrow. Uh, rotate 180 degrees. And, well, one thing's for sure, that if I do this rotation, if I pick this up, turn it around 180 degrees and put it back down again, then the arrow that used to be pointing to the right will now certainly be pointing to the left. It's an exercise that you should do carefully uh, to check that when we do that rotation, this crossing here, after the rotation, does indeed become this crossing here, uh, and so on for the other two crossings. So that's an example showing that a knot can be equivalent to its reverse. Uh, here's a Here's a second one for you, it's an exercise. So I would like you, if you wish, to pause the video and uh, attempt to show that if H denotes this particular hop flink here, then H is equivalent to its reverse. And here is my answer. Well, first of all, let me reverse the link again. Here we go, there's the reverse. Now, I hope you can see that if I tried to repeat the same trick from the previous example, it wouldn't work. You see in H, at the top, both of the arrows are pointing inwards, if you like. If I rotated it, they'd both still be pointing inwards, whereas in the reverse, it's the exact opposite. 
So actually what I do is, it is another rotation, it's just I have to be careful which one. So that I get between them by rotating 180 degrees around this line here. Whoops. Why does that give me, let me, let me write that here, rotate 180. Why does that rotation turn H into RH? Well, like in the previous example, it will send this crossing down to this one, and it will send this crossing up to this one. But why does it uh, do the correct thing with the arrows? Well, if I were to do the rotation, then what would happen to this arrow? Well, it would end up down here, pointing that way. And what would happen to this arrow here? It would end up down here, pointing that way. And hopefully, hopefully you can see that if I pick this arrow up and slide it around, it exactly becomes this one. And then if I pick this up and slide it around, it exactly becomes this one. So the orientation on the reverse, well, the orientation on the right-hand side I get after this rotation is indeed the same as the orientation for the reverse. And that's the end of the mini lecture.